what's going on uh, in terms of what you see on social media with uh, this whole creepy idea. This usually comes up more with younger clients that I have and younger men in general that I interact and talk to. I have a lot of younger cousins and a younger brother. And um, and so I, I've heard this come up like, yeah, but you know, look at these videos that are going viral with these women who are, you know, calling out these creepy guys at the gym or whatever. I'm not saying there aren't creepy men out there. Absolutely, there are creepy men. It's just not most men, okay? I think as a man, if so many men were creeps, you would come across a lot more creeps even as a man, right? What I do think is happening in that space is the following. There have always been a group of men on one end, like the predator, creepy, you know, men. And then there's this other side where women are just melodramatic and looking for conflict and unfortunately emotionally not well and haven't worked on themselves as a human being. Emotionally immature and emotionally just don't have any self-awareness. Those women have always been around as well. Now we live in a time of social media, being able to give these people, and in this case women, megaphone and they take up some real estate, the uh, social media space to go out there and perpetuate this idea that this is happening more than it really is. And I think that once you get clear on that, you are able to see that that's not most cases, except that that sells and that gets followers and that gets likes because it is like pushing on the fear buttons, right? Let's look at videos where the, you know, the ladies are talking about the beautiful men, things that men are doing or the gestures or the, you know, there are men doing great things, but for some reason, we want to highlight these interactions that what I've seen in some videos, which I was actually not happy, but I was, you know, glad that it kind of blew up in the girl's face where she was trying to, to I guess, call out someone that was doing something creepy and it wasn't the case. So this hypersensitivity and this almost like looking to call people out that are doing things that they're not really doing does exist, but it doesn't exist to the level that I think men are thinking that it exists. And that I think, I know, that's my take, that's my personal opinion from what I see working with men, working for, with men for many years, when I, you know, go through social media and I see these uh, videos and in a, you know, short form or long form, that's what I get out of it. But I do want to say that that's not most men, that is not most experience of most women. I go to several gyms because I have a pass where I can go to all every gym in all different kinds of neighborhoods um, and I don't experience that. I live in New York where I'm in very close proximity to people all the time. I live right in the middle of the city. I can't leave my house without, you know, walking past many people and I never feel unsafe or like someone is doing something creepy. Yes, I've had people try that, but I'm very forward and I'm very direct and I make sure that instead of blowing up and acting weird or crazy, I just let people know. You learn this in martial arts. You try to avoid any kind of physical altercation because of your safety, but you do put people in their place and let them know to, you put your boundaries basically. So I just wanted to clarify that. I do want to say that in the nightclub industry, I worked as a bartender, a bar manager for many years, and I interacted with a lot of men before starting my coaching business. I used to own a concierge business, so I dealt with a lot of people there as well. And I want to say that even though I've had interactions with men that could have been boring or awkward, funny and fun, or, you know, just even sometimes a really deep conversation with a stranger that makes an impact. I can think of conversations that I've had with a stranger that have completely inspired me or moved me in such a way that it's impacted my life. Now, that being said, I just want to say that the world would not be the same and my life experience would not be the same if I wouldn't have all of those men, including the ones that were awkward and weird or whatever, approach me and talk to me. I wouldn't be the person that I am. I wouldn't even have the business that I have and, and all the other business that I have because it revolved around people interacting, people meeting people, and in this case, men approaching women. So get out there and build your rejection muscle because like anything the more you go at it the you build it and the more you build that rejection muscle the closer you are to meeting your lifetime partner an amazing lover a great business partner a new friend a new person who will inspire you for something that you don't even know is there or available so before you approach women whether it's on the street on the train at a park, an event, do you have this conversation with you in your head about, well, wait a second, if I approach her, she's gonna think I'm creepy or I'm a predator, so I better not. I don't want her to think that. So this is what I was talking about that keeps coming up a lot. And you're not alone. You really are not alone. But I want to start out with first defining what creepy and predator really is because I think they're being overused and I think they've lost the meaning of what they really are. And to be called that, to be called a predator,
predator or a creep or do, that I'm creepy would be terrible. I would feel awful. So I think if we can look at what it means, we can get it out of our heads that people are going to see us as that, right? Us meaning you. How are you being perceived? So let's take a quick look and see what the definition of creepy is and what the definition of a predator is. Okay, so we're going to start with creepy. This is based on the Oxford Dictionary. It says creepy is causing an unpleasant feeling of fear. I don't think you're intending that when you're coming to say hello to someone. The Cambridge Dictionary defines it as unpleasant and making you feel uncomfortable, especially because of sexual behavior that's not wanted or appropriate. I definitely don't think that's your goal, what you're going for. Now here's predator. Oxford Dictionary. Predator. Someone who follows people to harm them or to commit a crime against them. I don't think that's what you intended on a Friday night. And the Merriam-Webster definition is one who injures or exploits others for personal gain or profit. So I think that you can be pretty sure of yourself that you are not a predator and you're not creepy. This is where I'll say that maybe you're awkward, maybe you're nervous, maybe you're even boring, but to say and to go to the extent of that you're not going to approach people or interact with people and it, it doesn't even have to be in a bar setting or in a you know night type setting i mean anywhere if you're staying away from people because you may think that they feel that you're going to be creepy or you're going to be seen as a predator understand that that's not the case because you're not a creep or a predator predators and creepy guys men don't think that about themselves. They don't stop themselves to think like, hey, you know what? Maybe I'm like gonna offend this person or I'm going to cross the line. If you're thinking and asking yourself, is this gonna be interpreted as creepy or predatory? <laughs> then you're not. I think it's safe to say that you're not. Those men don't think. They just offend and injure, insult, or whatever other things that they're doing. And I will say that most crimes, sexually committed crimes or predatory crimes, sexual harassment are committed by the same men over and over again. So it's not that there's a large pool of men doing it. There's a small percentage of men who are offenders that continue to do it. If you're asking yourself that question, you're not a predator and you're not creepy. 